And you're welcome back to The Breakfast. It's now time to take a look at the top stories in our newspapers. And we're starting first with the Punch newspaper. The big story here says private sector warns of mass hunger, economic crisis over fresh lockdowns. And we see just how much these go. Uh, another lockdown will dip in recession, destroy business. And that's by the Chamber of Commerce. And uh, it says here Nigeria may not recover from fresh lockdowns. Economy already weak. And that's uh, by man. And uh, here we're saying the federal government says we're aware of implications of second lockdown and new COVID-19 strain more difficult. Another big story here is about the 774,000 jobs to be given to 1,000 uh, residents of each local government, 774 local governments in the country. Uh, in that, that program is to begin today. And the punch story here is saying it's beginning on a shaky note. Another one here says COVID-19 violators under travel ban once get new passports. But we see the NIS, Nigerian Immigration Service, saying they even have no clue what's going on. So let's just wait and see how that goes. Um, on page seven here of the Punch newspaper, here's uh, Wale Shrinka, Nigeria's Nobel laureate, saying, talking about Buhari is not good for his sanity. <laughs> Quite I actually saw that, um, I saw clips from that interview yesterday. Um, I believe he was on a, um, on a train ride. He was uh, you know, having his own assessment of one of the trains. And uh, the reporter had asked him you know, about the President Mohamed Buhari government. And he waved it off. He said, you know, he's not going to talk about it. Um, and of course, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, for his sanity, uh, he would rather um, just ignore. And he said, you know, everyone should really just uh, in their minds ignore, you know, the existence of the, you know, the current administration and, you know, wave it off like it never happened um, wow. until it goes in his words. Um, well, not exactly his words, but that's what he basically said. Um, for his sanity, he doesn't want to talk about it. He might talk, you know, in bits and pieces of uh, the the Nigerian situation, but with regards to government itself, um, you know, it, it's just it should just be ignored, you know, like it never happened, basically. Mm. And taking a look, a deeper look at this top story here about a second lockdown and its possible impact on the Nigerian economy. We're seeing experts here, Chamber of Commerce, saying this would possibly deepen recession, this would increase hunger. And I remember when the news of recession first broke in Nigeria, we saw the Minister of Finance coming out to say, I would never forget those words, saying Nigeria will exit recession, quote, historically fast. Yeah. We're still waiting to see just how fast that is with every economic you know trend going on right now depends on you know um what they have planned it depends on what they think you know they should do in order to get us you know out of a recession um and you know what they're really what moves they're really making to get us out of a recession um, with regards to lockdown, yes, you know, the, the economy would suffer uh, badly, you know, mm -hmm. if there's another lockdown. I remember what it, it felt like in the first one and how, you know, the hunger basically was, was so bad. You, you could see people on the streets literally begging for food, yes. begging for handouts. Yes, um, that and was terrible. And businesses suffered massively. A lot of businesses still haven't recovered from the first lockdown. Um, and if you're going to give, you know, put out another one, um, it's, it's going to be even more difficult for those businesses to, um, you know, in any way survive. So it's, it's, it's tough, you know, for businesses across the country, for our economy. Um, but the question, you know, that I would always want to, you know, ask is what exactly is the plan of the Nigerian government to enable us survive another lockdown? If we, for any reason, have to get into another one because we get to a critical situation with the COVID-19, um, what plan do they have to, you know, enable us survive? Are we just, you know, going to, you know, do what is necessary and then, you know, somehow, some way, may the best immune system survive, may the best, um, you know, may, may the most prayerful person survive. And at the end, you know, the government says, oh, you know, we, we've, you know, finally, you know, gotten out of this and let's move on. Do they have an actual plan? And that's, that's what I really want to know. Mm -hmm. The economic management team, is there a plan for Nigeria and its economy to survive another lockdown? So um, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting, you know, to, to understand some of these things. I, I believe that we have uh, um, on uh, standby our guest, uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, the publisher of CKN News. Uh, good morning. Thank you for joining us, sir. Good morning. Happy New Year. Same, Same to you, to sir. You. Thank you very us. much uh, for uh, joining us this morning. And uh, just before you, you, you joined in, we've been talking about uh, key issues 
in the papers this morning, especially the punch. And I think we're going right now to look at uh, the special works program. Uh, President Muhammad Buhari signed the program to take off this morning. But the weird thing is, just like we discussed yesterday, Osarugi, about a lack of synergy between ministries, departments, and agencies, we're having different state governments, especially the Ogun state government, the minister or uh, chairman of special works in Ogun state saying that uh, there's been no instruction to begin the program in the state. So just what is the accurate information? Uh, Mr. Chris Wando, would you like to throw in your weight on this one? Well, um, that is not with government policy policies uh, where you have uh, discontent and tunes uh, from um, all angles. Uh, we're taught out programs, but our problem has always been that of intention. So, um, if the state government is saying that, then that is news because, uh, especially, uh, most often than not, when the government come up with such policies, they don't seem to carry the state long. They just take decisions without necessarily consult the state uh, to find out how ready or how prepared they are for the program. So, but I just think that there should be some level of synergy to the federal government and the state government to make sure that this is carried properly and um, so that we can have a smooth talk. Um, look at the issue of the 774,000 um, um, jobs that we are supposed to have been uh, created since last year at a now emerged in lots of controversies. Um, the federal government, um, um, uh, the National Assembly and the rest of them, and that is still a matter. So, um, that has always been policy, our uh, policy uh, in implementing uh, good programs. That has always been my problem with this government. Uh, we have good ideas when it comes to implementation. Then uh, is, uh, you get begging and the idea of it all, they get messed up. So, but I just that the um, the government, federal government, to yes with this government information that uh, takes over. All right. Uh, quick, quickly also speak on one of the stories on the punch this morning is Sokin. I'm sure it makes it across all the papers this morning. Omoyele Shawari and uh, his uh, arrest once again. The court, of course, has uh, remanded him uh, until his bail applica application. Um, there is, of course, people who say, well, yes, you know, he's been a noise maker. Um, why would you want to protest on the first of, you know, the new year, and, you know, in the first place and, and so much? And, of course, there's also those who believe that, yes, he still has a right uh, as a Nigerian, um, guaranteed by the Constitution, to express himself. Um, what are your thoughts on how this has played out? Protest is a fundamental right of every Nigerian. So, mm -hmm. as much as it's not bad, then you are not breaking any law. So, um, there's no reason to arrest anybody for protesting. Um, it's a fundamental right that is trying to the Constitution. What we rather prefer people um, carrying arms or carrying guns like bandits and the soldiers going around killing people. Is that what we want? So uh, that is a fundamental right uh, um, for sure or anybody to protest. Uh, as an individual, if I say anything wrong, what the government is doing, I have the right to write back and protest in as much as it is not violent or be to, um, uh, in the course of doing a mixed crime, rest of them, hijack it, then that becomes a problem. Um, so I believe this should be done with, um, and then the court should be able to package that. Um, so the show where he respects what the politics about him is a Nigerian, and uh, he has a right to his uh, uh, to protest or make any kind of utterances once it's within a bit of the law. But if it goes beyond the law, then then that is an issue. So for me, uh, I don't see any reason why he held or kept in prison. Anyway, I think. Um, um, the the judge, so judge has joined uh, um, the application, and that will be less agenda. In the, in the All right, interesting. Let's, let's move over to the Guardian newspapers and see what we can find over there. Uh, the major story you can already see, or you would see now, yes, uh, Nigerians vote security as priority in year 2021. Um, it also says Buhari should tackle insecurity. The reason he was voted, says Peter Side. We need security for growth, environmentalist uh, Nimo Basi declares. And also it says here, insecurity has reduced Nigeria to a jungle, ex-IYC president laments. Um, also on The Guardian this morning, Lo Hamatan, and this one is personal to me because I don't know what a Christmas without Hamatan uh, is. Yes. Uh, th this is, you know, not what we are used to. I'm not sure who uh, we need to speak with.
whoever is in charge of the Hamatan this year, needs to be summoned. It says, uh, low Hamatan triggers mixed blessings, say experts. Um, also, um, it also says, it insists the persistent heat may reduce COVID-19 spread and fatality. Pick fresh service chiefs, increase defense budget to solve insecurity. Northern leaders tell President Buhari. And also, federal, the federal government forecloses second COVID-19 lockdown, urges observance of safety protocols. Airlines bicker over 4 billion Nara bailout sharing formula. And also on The Guardian, only Oshimbajo and Zulum ticket can give APC victory in 2023 election. Uh, Mr. Wandu, you can pick you know, any of them that triggers you, uh, you would like to speak on. Uh, let me start um, with the Hamdan. That was rightly said. Whoever arrested the Hamatan should just let it out. Um, <laughs> yeah, what is Hamatan with this? Um, <laughs> we we'll <listen> about that. <laughs> but this time, um, Hamatan is must with um, uh, with this mass. Um, but I think the problem is having issue with the ozone layer. Um, so uh, that in itself is a big challenge across the globe, and uh, we're having serious climate change that is um, affecting uh, every part of the world. So uh, we are not getting the norms as it were. And um, so this has become a, a source of concern to every leader, especially in the Western world. And that this case, they get something to give in the next uh, uh, few, few years. And which is why uh, the incumbent of uh, America is all, even setting up, trying to get uh, uh, advice out of an advisor on climate change. And you know that the outgoing president, Donald Trump, uh, he doesn't seem to be interested in that. So it's a general uh, thing. But good enough, with the uh, good aspect of it is, uh, so as you know, uh, it rained in Lagos yesterday, and we are all surprised. So part of it was, I don't know whether you know, in area. So uh, that is a shower of blessing, good things to come um, for me this year. So let's see how that goes. Um, then on... Um, other issues, let's talk of security. Uh, there's been a lot of security across, uh, across Nigeria in the few weeks as well. Um, then um, the our security agencies that to be getting still getting it right. Um, the call for the sack or replacement of services is overdue, and but the president says it's going to um, reject and the security approach this less is going to be that. Um, he has been seeing that. For a long time and nothing to be happening. So uh, he's the commander in chief. Um, if anything happens, the the whole uh, bug is on his school. So if he doesn't do that and just continue to take him responsible, irrespective of whoever he has there, is the chief security officer. If there's a high level of insecurity, is the one who is responsible. So if he needs to do the needful, he needs to do this as quickly as possible. Then um, to COVID 19. The spike is on. Um, even the kingdom just last night um, shut down totally, and across the globe, countries shutting down. Uh, and, and people are dying in Nigeria. Um, just yesterday, um, the son of one of a, uh, one of the biggest restaurant company, uh, the company, uh, son of a billionaire, died. Uh, my good friend Alaba, I think I just came out yesterday that he just came out of isolation and so so many dying at the isolation centers. Um, uh, former uh, vice chancellor of the University of Lagos, uh, yes. that be, just died from COVID accordingly. So, despite and those are the ones we know, what of the common Nigerians that are dying that we don't know about. So, all we need to do is the government has to just up its cap and especially the SDC to do the needful. And also, the state. My uh, my challenge here is why this some of these are so quick in opening this when we're having a spike. Most of this, I don't know why they're in a hurry to do that. And uh, that to me is endangering the life of um, students. Some, mm. uh, some states have already opened yes, and some are just planning to open. That's that true, is, that's uh, true, Mr. That Wanjo. But we quickly have that. to move to the next paper right now, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's take a look at the Nigerian Tribune. The big story here says Nigeria won't surrender its sovereignty to the ICC. Uh, that's the federal government. It accuses body and human rights groups of aggravating. Nigeria's security challenges. Here, there's a big one on COVID-19 with research saying drug used to treat cancer could cure COVID-19. And Nigeria here in states of war with close to 100,000 infections, and that's according to health workers' unions. 
There's another story here talking about uh, the, the big issue, Atiku, uh, a divesting from Intel, saying the federal government destroyed uh, his business and is destroying legitimate businesses in the country. Uh, here says, Umahi accuses opposition of releasing force attack on herdsmen videos. The story about the special works program also here. Amoteku arrests 120 criminals in Ondo State. The story here about uh, any airline complaining about release bailout fund is ungrateful. That one is just a big controversial issue on its own. But let's look at security, uh, Mr. Umwando. Just yesterday, some bandits killed at least nine travelers, and that's including infants in, uh, on a highway, Beningwari Kaduna Highway. Security issues just doesn't seem to end. And we just saw the story in The Guardian that Nigerians voted security as a priority uh, for the government to tackle in the new year. And here we see the federal government accusing human rights groups, saying they are basically aggravating so the security situation, maybe painting it worse than it is. Do you, do you think so, Mr. Wanda? I totally agree, I disagree uh, with the uh, position of the federal government. Um, the minister uh, and being out of suspect provision to me that cannot be verified. Mr. Chris, just a minute. Um, it was not could, only a, if you could kindly speak also, up. Also, uh, Mr. Chris, I'm, I'm, I'm if, you, if you could now. kindly speak up, please. Um, We're finding it difficult to hear you. I said the um, the Minister of Information and National Orientation yesterday. I had a preference uh, right here to uh, press when I was really not so sorry. Um, um, uh, information verified as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he thinks that not only I see, but Amnesty International is so is well in, is everything in Nigeria, and I wonder how they are doing that. Uh, he, he, what we are just doing, and the is just do it, uh, it's like the ostrich that beats its head inside the sand, and why his body, his body is um, left as poop. Um, are you saying that the ICC and the NST International are the ones that? Uh, funding uh, Boko Haram, I did the one funding bandits, I did the funding kidnapped across the globe, uh, across Nigeria. That to me is begging the issue. And uh, with all sense of uh, responsibility, I would say that uh, that said uh, to me, um, it, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. We should sit down and put the situation to the problem with it. Um, few day, a few weeks ago, over 70 um, rice farmers were killed. And uh, are you saying that the ICC that, that uh, did that, um, our soldiers have been killed? Seven. The governor of Bornu State, uh, who is, uh, who is in, in this initiative where uh, the whole action is taking place, has come out to say that the, our military have been to do what they're supposed to do. Is that ICC or Amnesty International? I think we should just uh, try to face the reality and make sure that uh, this thing is and realize this thing is not of one and it should politicize. What it is to politicize is a very idea which to me good then. Um the government has the responsibility. The basic responsibility of every government is the secure life and property of Nigeria. After that, then uh, other things follow. So if we are not doing that, then we should be be, uh, be, be um, uh, putting the blame on any international um, organization for doing that. What they are doing is the right thing. They are saying the truth. Are you shouldn't talk? They should. And if they see where we are going, they should be able to. So it is what look at ourselves in Europe, correct all the uh, necessary areas where we think we improve on and not just the main uh, organizations for, uh, uh, just for the fun of it. All right. Lastly, um, in, if you can squeeze in your thoughts in less than a minute, quickly speak on the story um, that says Amoteku arrest 120 people in, or criminals rather, in Ondo State. Uh, you know, speak, you know, quickly on, you know, how they, of course, are playing. Well, that's out. a good one. And so yeah. we are, now that's what we're getting for all these police and um, all these criminals uh, to able to help our police and our security agents. If you know, we have 500 million people, 500 million police to police us. That's absolutely impossible. So even uh, in our military, uh, they cannot be aware. So uh, I have been of the school thought that we need all these uh, uh, local vigilantes to be able to assist the police in their job. And this should be spread across the other parts of the, uh, the southeast and, uh, and the south. 
um, so that we can have all this kind of synergy, achieve some synergy between them and the uh, police. And that is what Ametekou is working. But we should still watch because there have been instances where they have accused of also engaging on some activities that were inimical to security, which I believe that the government should be able to check. But that's a good one on the part of Ametekou, and they should keep it up. All right. Chris Wandu, thank you so much for your time uh, this morning and for sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, of course, I uh, wish you, of course, a great day ahead. Thank you very much for having me. Have a blessed weekend. Absolutely. Um, we, of course, are totally out of time with the off the press segment this morning. Uh, there's a couple more stories that you can find if you look through the Punch, the Nation, the Daily Independent, and uh, um, other stories. And, of course, read up and find out what's going on in Nigeria. Uh, for now, we are going on a short break. When we come back, we're sharing with you. Yes, uh, today in history, pretty interesting facts about a legendary boxer with legendary punches, <laughs> as well as uh, the construction of a very interesting bridge that, uh, you know, statistics have said that it's the most used suicide site in the world. You'll find out what that is just after this break. <laughs>